Okay, so before we get ready for day five, we're actually gonna do a little scouting tomorrow morning, but one of the things Wyatt and I have been missing is some black face masks to wear in the blind. And it seems that nobody makes them anymore. So we were at Wally World and we have decided that for eight bucks, we're about to make two face masks. I wish I'd had the camera when Wyatt took this part and put it over his head to see if it would fit. But this is the kind of material, all joking aside, this is the kind of material you really like, especially if it's gonna get hot. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna, these are extra large, big boy shorts, and we are going to take them. We're gonna make two, okay. We're gonna make two I have to pull them really tight. No, maybe not. Pull about halfway over, then cut it straight over. There you go. All right, that'll work perfect. I'll tell you real quick. your neck loose on the bottom but you can pull it up keep them tight obviously the most important part about uh, hiding yourself in the blind are two things one is your left hand that's on the bow when you raise the bow up we've learned that from looking at our cameras out front looking back at the blind when you raise up that's the one thing that a gobbler might see because it gets a flash and then your face your face is obviously the whitest thing in there but uh, so if you can't find uh, <laughs> a face mask, you can always do what we just did. And we're going to have two. This is actually going to work beautifully. So, hey, improvise. We will be out listening for them. We're going to a new spot in the morning. We're not hunting tomorrow because we don't want to we don't want to mess it up. So we're going to back off. We're going to find out where the birds are at. And then Saturday morning we're gonna go, but we'll uh, we'll check back in with you tomorrow morning. Well, this isn't exactly what you would refer to as turkey roosting clothes, but we had to come check out a new spot tonight, and uh, I think we found our spot for tomorrow morning. This is beautiful. Got this big timbered area back in here, big trees, huge open area out in front, but we got this beautiful grassy spot right out here. So I think what we're gonna do is we're not even gonna really worry about roosting them. They're gonna be somewhere up and down this, uh, this tree line here. We're just gonna slip in here early in the morning and get set up right in here. It's a beautiful setup. Get the decoys out here and we'll be good to go. Day five will be happening tomorrow morning. Okay, well, day five, and on our way in here, we got sprayed by a skunk apparently on the front of the truck because it is oh my i didn't think it got the truck but oh my god does it stink so this hunt's going to be affectionately called the skunk hunt right off the bat everything gets a name luckily our good friend steve hool loaned us his pickup this morning let's just hope it doesn't smell like skunk when we get back <laughs> but uh we're perfect We've got a great spot to park here we're going to go down around the corner back in that little hole that we were in last night and get set up there. Beautiful morning, it's clear, kind of hazy, almost full moon. Let's go see if I can finish the Grand Slam this morning. Hopefully we'll hear one.
There he, there he goes. He's flopping. He's down just over the embankment right there. Oh, boy, I was a little bit worried. I thought I hit him just a little bit low there, but. 
Well, the Grand Slam is complete. It took a lot of years for that to happen. <laughs> you can't get a better hunt than that. I mean, that's as good as it gets. You know, here's what happened. We had these jakes. We had these jakes come in. Behind us, we heard one gobble. Of course, we heard these two way off in the distance. And we didn't even, we weren't even paying attention to anything with that. We were paying attention to these jakes coming around the blind. They saw the decoy and got over here, and I started messing with, I was calling, and they were getting all fired up. And then I looked over there, and I see uh, Wyatt said he thought he heard one drumming. And here they come through the timber. And uh, two big mature birds strut right into the decoy. I was going to try and shoot him in the waddles or in the head, but he kept, he was moving around so quick. I was just like, I'm, I'm going to try and shoot him right above the beard. I hit a little bit low, but uh, it did the job. I'm telling you, that DSD motion pair, I don't even have them hooked up for motion. I've just got them in their breeding position, and it's just been, that's three for three. We've had three gobblers see that decoy, and three gobblers have come into it, and it, uh, wow. What a hunt this morning. That was just phenomenal. <sighs> Day five is in the books. Let's go see this Osceola gobbler. <laughs> See, I don't even have the motion part of it hooked up. I've just got him sitting on top of there. Got the Tacticam up here. Can't wait to see that footage. We also had, here's my arrow right here. My beautiful Aerotech Freak 400 with a little blood on it. The old Luminoc letting us know where she goes. Here he is, he got in the mud a little bit. Oh, check it out. Oh, he's beautiful. Look at his beard. Oh, beautiful. Got down there in the mud a little bit. Check this out. How beautiful is this Osceola gobbler? I gotta put my call back in my hat here. My lucky call. Check that out. Just a beautiful bird. Oh wow, look at these spurs. At least a three-year-old, look at that. Beautiful. Oh. <laughs> Boy, he's got a hole coming out of him down here. That old Spitfire did a number on him. Oh man, are they beautiful. Hey, that was just a perfect hunt. We come in here last night and uh, we actually did not roost anything. We didn't hear anything gobble, but we just, looking at the topo, this looked like a really good corner to set up with a lot of big trees and, and fields that direction. We figured there was gonna be some birds down here. We did see some tracks out in the sand, so we knew that it was gonna be pretty good, or we thought we had a chance if we sat here long enough, and it didn't take long. <laughs> we had two jakes come in from behind us, and they saw the decoy, obviously came right to it, and then, <laughs> Uh, we heard one drum and, and then boom, right through the timber, here they come. Right to the decoy. Just a beautiful Osceola gobbler. My first. I couldn't be happier. It's been a great hunt. It's always fun to spend time with my son Wyatt. We don't get to hunt together as much as we used to. But boy, when we do get to hunt, we've sure been lucky. Oh. <laughs> Day five in the books. The turkey tour is headed to Nebraska tomorrow. <sighs> Beautiful bird. Well, as I told you this morning, we had a little uh, skunk issue this morning. There's the culprit. We ran over it. And this truck stinks. So I'm going to head to the car wash to wash Steve's truck. <laughs>
First of all, here's another little trick. This morning, I shut my hand. This thing was up and wasn't paying attention to it. It came down on my hand. Whacked me there. I'm sure I bruised the crap out of it. And the skunk, but hey. Headed to the car wash. That's what I do what? We're headed to the car wash. Headed to the car wash. <laughs> That's what it takes to shoot a turkey. I'm in. Well, the skunk gobbler hunt puts a wrap on our Florida turkey tour. We had an awesome three days of hunting. I'm actually going through the car wash again because once is just not going to do it. That is a worst smelling skunk ever. Oh my goodness. Anyway, make sure and continue to follow us as we head, Wyatt will actually be heading with the boys to Nebraska.